So the key assumption that I'm using as we move into the next part of the presentation is that you are going to want to do the most comprehensive literature search that you can as you're using our resources while being efficient and effective at the same time. So I'm cognizant of the fact that you're under a lot of pressure and at the same time, uh, I'm thinking about the final product. And for most of you, that will be either a master's or a doctoral dissertation or thesis. Some of you may be doing a major research paper. I think for all those products though, you will have to do a literature review, present a literature review to your readers. And it's important to keep that in mind. So I'm thinking you need to not only be a kind of an expert in your field, you need to get up to speed on the literature of your particular niche area. So that's why I'm pointing you to a lot of resources outside just Google Scholar or Google or even the Omni database, which I'm assuming that most of you will be familiar with. Okay, on to the next part of the presentation, which has to do with the, what I'm calling the academic information ecosystem. This is something that many students are not really familiar with, but I find as I work with students and I explain a little bit about the system and what's going on in the background, it, it helps to clarify and maybe lessen some of the confusion. And I know that in your undergraduate years, you come to one of these systems and it's really confusing as to what's going on. Now, I know that ecosystem is a term that's used pretty freely these days and maybe it can be a bit misleading. Leading. But on the other hand, I think it's a helpful metaphor to describe what's going on because academic information is really a complex system of relationships between producers and consumers, just like in a regular ecosystem. And if you know who some of the producers are or the providers of access, let's say, that can help you as you're, as you're going through your research. Now, most of us would probably start and I'm getting a little bit narrow here. Most of us probably start with Google or Google Scholar, but if you've done a little bit of research, you may start with an information portal like the library homepage here, and you might do a search in Omni and retrieve some peer-reviewed articles, and that's fine. Or you might also be used to going into a little bit more specialized point of access through one of our databases like GeoBase, ProQuest, or Web of Science but I'd like to discuss about what's happening in the back end when you do that. Let's take a database, a very specific database called the Environmental Science Collection. It provides access to people to individual journals and those journals themselves consist of a number of articles within their collection, let's say. Now, related to that are other databases that stand on their own, Biological Science Collection and ERIC, which stands for the Educational Resources Information Clearinghouse. Those databases also provide access to particular journals. One journal can be shared across multiple databases. And this gets more complicated when we see that there are some journals that are shared amongst many databases, and some journals that are not. Some journals may only be found in one particular database. And then to complicate things a little bit more, we have databases that specify in certain types of content like theses and dissertations. They may have no journals at all. They may have no articles at all. However, other databases may be able to reach out and get access to those particular types of content. So now we're making things even more complex. On top of all that, there are companies like ProQuest who either own databases outright or license them from other information providers, information producers. So sometimes we call these information producers, sometimes we call them providers, but it means that there's one platform that may encompass a lot of information within its scope. Okay. So we've discussed ProQuest, which is one very large information company that provides access to a number of different databases. We also have Web of Science, which is owned by Clarivit. You're probably familiar with Web of Science, but not so familiar with the name of the company that owns it. Web of Science is a platform that provides access to a number of different databases as well. And conversely, there's Ex Libris, all three of these are large 
very large information companies, private companies, as a matter of fact. ProQuest has within its orbit or scope a number of different databases. Web of Science is very famous for the Science Citation Index, but also Arts and Humanities Citation Index and Social Science Citation Index, all within the Web of Science platform. And Ex Libris produces a database that we've called Omni. It's actually what we in our profession refer to as a discovery layer. So it's almost like a portal that sits on top of a whole bunch of different information within its own database. We already know that ProQuest provides access to not only journals and different content types like theses. Conversely, Science Citation Index and Omni also have their own journals that they provide access to, some of which are shared, just like our previous example in ProQuest. And additionally, there are also different content types that you can find in a database like Omni. Omni has media like video, audio, government information as well. Lots of different information types. So what am I saying by all this? Number one, it's a very complex information ecosystem. Don't feel bad, even if you're a graduate student, if you're finding this very complicated. That's why Mary and I are here. We're here to help you navigate this ecosystem. But secondly, and maybe even more importantly, please don't rely on just one platform for your information. As you're getting into comprehensive literature searching, make sure you rely on more than one. Make sure that if you're only using Omni, you use a few more like Web of Science. And that will depend on your subject specialty that you're interested in. And again, let us know if you need a recommendation. Although I will be touching on that in some videos coming up. 